Hey guys, it's Nikki here with Lifestyle DIY W, and today I'm showing you one of the best DIYs I think I've created, and it's super easy. And it costs nothing to create. Yes, I created that farmhouse clock on that wall above my mantle, and it was kind of like an Amazon dupe. So I have been looking at these clocks in like all these other stores, including Amazon, and they were about 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars. And I'm like, hell no. I just didn't know which one I really wanted to make. So I was gonna make either the white one or the brown one. And I remembered I had the Target decorative paper. Now you're also gonna need some paint, um, and you're gonna need some paint sticks, paint brush, Mod Podge, hot glue gun, and some scissors, a marker, and a few other items. But nothing too crazy that you haven't found. My one thing that I say is for your DIYs that you may think are complicated, sketch them out, get a piece of paper or your DIY journal, and hey, I have an update about that at the end of this video, so stay tuned. I made this wall clock literally from the items that I had in my house. I didn't want to spend no money, and I wanted to kind of create um, a challenge to wear, not even a challenge, but a challenge, yes, to, for myself that I could create this wall clock with basically nothing because we're on quarantine and we can't get outside to really even buy many things or try to go looking and searching how we would normally do. And I didn't want to order it. I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money. I wanted to see if I could actually create this too with these simple items. Now, the rest of this video, some parts of it, I'm going to come in and out, and then I'm going to have you guys watch because it is um, going to be a detailed video because even though it is a super simple, easy DIY, it was time-consuming because there were certain parts of this DIY that I really wanted to get intact. So what you see me doing here is just coloring my paint sticks black. I used a plastic bag and I added some paint to the bag and that made it easier for me to cover each paint stick. There was no way in the world I was going to paint each one of those by hand. <laughs> so I did it the easy way, the fastest way that I could think about and it came out super easy to make. So the reason why I added the time lapse to this video is because a lot of this video I did want to be able to talk through because I'm physically not going to be in the video and I did want to sh tell you what I was doing with my hands. In the time lapse so, so once you take your paint sticks out the bag you want to make sure you have you put them on something that would not stick to the back of the paint stick I had two pieces of cardboard and thank God that I had white pieces of cardboard from like an order I got and so I cut out a circle and I believe the circle was about almost 23 inches across so that's pretty big that's like almost the same size as a real wall clock both circles and glue them together so I have the target decorative paper that I cut into three even strips I started with the middle strip just to make sure I had enough space on both sides for an even strip of paper so I matched the lines up so that way they look even going across the board I trimmed the paper around the board and just added some hot glue to close down the sides of the paper So your next step is to mark your center and to mark where your numbers will go. Now I didn't show you guys how I made the Roman numerals and all I did was add glue to make the X's and the V's and stuff and I glued two black zip ties together to make the hand. So hey guys, um, I'm coming on video because I wanted to um talk about the sample that i was talking about yesterday talking about talking about <laughs> no but i wanted to um just follow up on the video snippet that i put out yesterday just showing you some of the stained paper that i was working with um and this shit is technical okay so <laughs> but yeah so the first sample that i showed you guys in the video was this one the night before, so the DIY I'm working on, I wanted to have that foxwood feel and texture when you look at it, right? So the paper, the old, like a beigey kind of light brown in between that. But I want it to be more whitish gray with that kind of same effect. So that way the DIY would actually look real. 
so I was the when I first dealt with the paper I just painted it with the acrylic paint and you see like and it was with a brush so you see how like the paint just like sits on top of the paper it doesn't really bleed into the paper it doesn't really even give you any type of texture or effect like this side you see this is purely paint this side I'm gonna talk about in a minute I said this I left it alone for the night and I was kind of perplexed because I'm like what am I going to use or am I going to keep the DIY with the regular textured paper or am I going to take a chance and paint it and what if I stain it, then how does that work on the paper, right? And how does that make the DIY look? Because I'm going for a particular look. Forms on Instagram and in the DIY world, she's top notch in home organization and just, you know, like solving those little problems, right? Because this same process you could actually use to DIY a wall in your house or any other type of wallpaper. This is actually bulletin board, right? So. If I was doing my wallpaper, if I was paper mache a DIY wall, like I would need to do the same steps as far as like, how far can I go with this paper to see if I could stain it and make it look false in another way, right? So that's that's my mentality. So when I reached out to her, I told her my, my DIY dilemma. And she was like, you know what? Try these, try these two options and, you know, let me, you know, like let me know how it turns out. And she sent me video clips of something that she had created. The snippet that I showed you guys yesterday was the Mod Podge at a time. All right, so we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna do a little Mod Podge, let it dry. Right. So um, today I'm gonna use a brush because I want to see what happens when you brush on the watercolor versus sponging it. Right. So the second square is gonna be the watercolor so now I see I need to brush the brush like I can't have it too wet because then it really doesn't do anything oh yeah it does change it I don't know if you guys can see that but it does change it a little bit and I'm using my Archon mounts to kind of show you guys like the ease of turning the mount and it's so crazy, you know, like it's such an easy item to have when you're doing DIYs. Like you don't have to be fumbling with your camera or whatever. You can just easily turn it one hand turn. Now I tried it. This is with the Mod Podge and this is just watercolor. So I'm going to go over it one more time and see what happens, how white it gets. It's kind of like going over it four times. Right? Just now. And I'm going to wipe away the paint. So now doing that. This is where in the first one, you saw the crinkles in the paper, right? You see the little white, the little white areas in the back. That was the crinkle from this paper. So I like that it turns white. I'm not sure if I like to see the crinkles. So that's why I did the third thing, right? So now, let me just do the watercolor because the Mod Podge is dry right now. Now I'm doing this with the sponge. Now I don't know if it gives it a different effect with the sponge as far as how much comes out, but that's with the sponge. And I'm gonna wipe. What I will tell you is that because I did the base with a Mod Podge, it's kind of going to seal it in, right? So it may seal it in to the point where you still can see the texture of the wood. It turns the color a little bit. It doesn't turn the color too much. So technically through the camera, I see how brown it still is. Through the camera, I see how white and how frayed this is. This is frayed. So when you do just watercolor, it kind of frays the paper. When you do the Mod Podge, it leaves a little See, you see it? It gives it a little shine, right? Which is crazy. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna dry, I'm gonna dry this off just a little bit. And I'm gonna do the third one with the sponge watercolor. And 
right? I'm gonna let that seep in a little bit. I hope you guys can see. Let's see. So I did this with just watercolor just now. When you see the difference, it starts to seep in the paper. I'm gonna wipe it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of paint. And I'm gonna take that same brush. And now I'm gonna paint it. And I really, Just gonna kind of like brush that paint off. So now, which is crazy because I feel like what I did yesterday, I literally can't do it again. <laughs> like, I don't know. It just feels like. feel like I feel like I can't really use the watercolor but then I can't really use paint either at the same time like this came out this piece right here was the one I was gonna use yesterday out of the sample. This was the second one I did when I drew the lines down. I thought this came out perfect. But now that I'm doing it again, it's like, what did I do differently yesterday? Did I add paint, like more paint on it with the sponge? Like, See, I have to be careful. See, I have to be careful, right? See, I feel like this is too white. And I don't mind seeing too many of the creases. I just don't have the opportunity to mess up. Because once I start the DIY, I don't have the opportunity to take the paper off and change it. I mean, I could do that if it happens to mess up, but I really don't want to do it. So I really kind of want to mess up as many times on the sample scraps and then be like, oh, okay, this is my... This, you know, like this is my situation and this is how I'm definitely going to do it. I like, I like doing this finish. And for the most part, the DIY is a flat surface. There shouldn't be too many ripples, except when you get to the creases to connect two sheets of paper, right? So, cannot even, just the time and efforts put in this is like, I can't even mess this up right now. So I think I'm going to do it like this. do it like that and I think the reason why this is turning like this is because of the Mod Podge and it's kind of bleeding the paper a little bit and causing it to give it that grayish rust rustic effect like it truly is I wish I had better lighting to even show you guys hold on let me see if I can plug but this is the back of the paper of the item right I just want to see how it works back here if it works like this with the sponge then we got money then we got money then we good money, honey. Let's see. How's that look? It looks right, right? Yeah, man. It does look right. Just to pop in really quickly, I added a little bit more paint to my little watercolor bottle, and that's why it's a little bit more thicker. Snippet. We're back. This is literally after that snippet you guys saw. So this is still pretty kind of wet. So what I want to do is um I don't I don't want it to be wet so much to the point where it starts to rip the paper. Like I have a little tear right here, but that's fine. Remember, I still have to put the letters around it. Um I do have this, which is supposed to go in the middle of 
the circle and I'm supposed to trace around this to give me that center piece, right? I believe this is actually too big. I'm not gonna cut around, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like I was thinking like, oh, maybe I should just cut around it to give me the circle, blah, blah, blah. I'm not doing that. The reason why I know it's too big is because when you put the letters down, it's going to be on that black circle. I wasn't sure if I really wanted that black circle, but at least it'll help me guide the middle. So, okay. So actually, right? So here we are in this paper with Timmy. <laughs> hey, Alexa. Alexa, don't have even listen to me. But anyway, so we're just gonna trace around using the Dollar Tree placemat. Just to give us a center. I'm not worried about measurements and all that other great, great stuff you guys be thinking about. I know some of you are technical and some of my videos, most of my videos, all of my videos will never be really, really technical like that. So you saw what I did? I just stuck my pencil through the placemat just to give me the center of the circle. This is the center. So technically, this is where my my clock turner, can you see it? Because I can kind of see it. Like, I can kind of see it. You're going to have. So look, I was literally right. So the circumference of the circle, let's pull this up a little bit so you can see. The circumference of the circle, I mean, the, the length of the circle is 29, right? Approximately 29. So if I wanted to even out both sides just to make sure my middle was correct, I have 14 on one side, 14 inches on the other, and then I have one in the middle, which would make it 29. So 14 and a half gives me the same spacing, which is, I was literally almost right. See, that's why I don't use measurements. Like, I've never really used measurements. But, so this is where my middle is. This is where my turner will go. It's not gonna be a real turner, but whatever situation I put it, it'll be able so I can maybe move it around if I wanted to, to make it look like it's moving. That would be crazy. Um, but, so I should be good. I should not, it should not look too off. If I need to move it up, then I'll move it up. Cause technically I have, I have it right here, but let's see how it goes. Anyway. I call her she, I don't know why. Maybe I'll call it a he. It doesn't matter. But isn't it lovely? I actually adore this. Like I said from the beginning, this is probably one of my best, 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 best DIYs that I I made. There's so many DIYs that I've made, but this one right here is like almost at the top of my list. Like honestly, I love the dupes. I'm definitely gonna do more dupes for you guys because this was amazing look at my spring bean mantle and here is the reveal i wanted to really show you guys all together what it looked like with the clock i know i was giving you guys a few you know ideas while i was showing you on my instagram but here's a full look at this mantle for spring even a little bit of summer because i'm not taking it down no time soon i love it i love the bead decor i love that farmhouse clock this is real time this in my house there's so many diys on this mantle i hope you recognize them my beehive skip my nautical rope basket that farmhouse clock of course my bee banner uh oh my goodness guys i love the honey and bee decor that i created for this season and this clock just really set the tone for where we're going for decor in my home even on quarantine like literally we're still on quarantine so if you feel creative 
please watch and you know leave a comment drop a like or whatever you want to do and if you do create this diy let me know because i would love to see your um amazon dupe of please stay tuned So I included a lot of DIYs in this spring bee mantle. So make sure you click those links in my yes. Oh, wait, you thought it was over? No, I have a quick little surprise for you. So guys, I can't show you, but I'm coming up with my own DIY project pages for you to download to help you get through some of your complicated DIY projects. Like guys, this project right here, probably the most complicated, even though it looked easy and simple, it really was. And so I really needed a sheet that I can use to really work through my DIYs. And that's what I'm bringing for you starting in June. So make sure you click that link in my bio on Instagram and subscribe to my newsletter because that will be opening up in June as well. And I want to get to know you guys on a more personal level. So especially because we have the time and we're still on quarantine. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And it's Nikki here with Lifestyle DIYW. Make sure you...